All right, I want to greet you all this morning in the precious name of our Lord and Savior. Uh, thankful to be here with you all again this morning. You hear the singing and the thoughts that the boys brought out. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we come before you this morning and we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for your grace. Lord, help us to be faithful to you. Forgive us where we fail you, Lord. Help us to have courage and strength, Lord, to see the goal in mind, Father. Again, we just want to thank you for all that you do for us. Help us be faithful again. Fill us with your spirit. And give us wisdom in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, let's open our Bibles to Romans 12. Begin in verse 1. Just had a thought during the prayer there of keeping our eyes focused on the goal before us. It's so easy for us to get caught up in day-to-day -day life, week after week, month after month, year after year, just kind of going through religion, going through the motions, and we kind of get caught up in what's going on around us. We get caught up in doing whatever we think we need to be doing, and we often just lose sight of the goal that's set before us. The songs we sing about this morning, and, and a, lot of, a lot of the Bible talks about it and reminds us to keep pressing forward to that day that we face eternity. We realize what eternity is, and we realize God and all His glory and His splendor and that is so easily drowned out in the world and in our lives we just forget about those things and it's that's the goal the end result that we're all striving for we forget about them and I just want us to encourage us to keep that in our mind it's it gets difficult you know we press on and we learn something and we grow and we move and we live that way for a while and then we learn something new and it kind of changes things all around and we get caught up in where we're at and our goal is to keep our eyes focused on the Lord and our goal is when we stand before the Lord that he can say well done Thou good and faithful servant. Sometimes we forget that and we get caught up in other things. Let's just read Romans chapter 12. Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. I'll just stop there. Just the exhortation for us to present ourselves to God. We are not our own. We are so easily caught up in what we want out of this life and what we can gain or we can get out of it or what our plans are or what our future is and we forget that it is all God's and that we are his and that's what he exhorts us to present ourselves to not to be conformed to all the things that are around us or what we're going through or the life we're living not to be conformed to that but to be transformed and have our, having our minds renewed to what His will is for our life. Sometimes it, we think we know what God's will is, and as we grow, we learn and we see things that, that we were misguided 
misdirected. And we have to learn. It's a continual process. A lot of times we think, well, if I just knew what the Lord's will was for my life, and then everything would be fine. But the Lord's a living thing, and we're living things. We're growing things. And He uses areas of our lives to bring us through to get to the next step. And that's His will. Not just getting caught up in the one thing we're doing right now and being the Lord's will. So that you may prove what the will of God is. How many people we've seen that are just convinced that they're doing God's will. And uh, it's just amazing how sure people are sometimes that they're doing what God wants them to do. And, and most around them see that that's not the way it is or that's not the way it should be. And sometimes by God's grace, He does show us that we can do better or we can go on and pursue something higher. And that's what, that we may prove the will, that which is good and that which is perfect. Sometimes we get so caught up in zeal and ambition of thinking that we're doing the right thing and we miss so many things all around us. So I just want to encourage us this morning to keep our focus on the Lord, keep our focus on the end goal that we press on. For, the, for through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think more highly of himself than he ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment, as God has allotted to each a measure of faith. For just as we have many members in one body, and all the members do not have the same function, so we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually members one of another. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. I'll just stop there. Just bring out a few thoughts here. For, the grace, for through the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. How many times we get to thinking more highly than we ought to think of ourselves. We see ourselves doing something pretty well and we begin to pat ourselves on the back, begin to think we're really doing something. And then it's easy to look out among us and see, well, they're not doing what I'm doing. or They're not quite where I'm at. Or we get to thinking that I'm really doing something. Nobody else is doing anything. Or I'm the one doing all the giving. Or I'm the one doing all the helping. I'm the one carrying all the burden. I'm the one carrying all, coming up underneath and doing it all. That's thinking too highly of ourselves. To lose ourselves is to be able to do those things when Maybe nobody else is doing anything but to keep on doing those things. But we get to thinking too highly of ourselves sometimes. But it says that we ought to think highly of themselves, that we ought to think, but to think so as to have sound judgment as God has allotted to each me a measure of faith. You know, in reality, everything that we have comes from God. Even the opportunity for faith. He has given us a measure of faith. We sometimes think we're something special because we have it. We have faith. We, have, we try to believe God. We see what the Bible says. We see truth. And, but a sound measure of judgment realizes that I am nothing of myself. You know, it wouldn't take but just to realize that we're nothing for God just to take his hand off of you just a little bit, just a minute, just a few minutes, just for a span of time and let you be what you would be without him. You know, sometimes we forget 
that we are here, we are what we are because of what God has done for us, not because we've done anything special of ourselves, but because of his grace and his mercy. He's brought us this. And if we begin to think highly of ourselves because it's of us, just imagine what it would be. You know, we see people that are just bound in deep sin and in trouble. You know why they're there? It's because they're without God. Because God has taken his hand off of them. And it, they just go to the depths that they go to because God's hand is not on them. And don't think any higher of yourselves than what you really are because I'll guarantee you everyone in this room, including myself, could go to those same depths if God just takes his hand off of us for just a moment. That's the grace that's given. You know, that's why whenever we look out at people and we see people in whatever situation we see them in. You know, some people even take it super religious and they get, they're just in much in, in the depths of evil as someone who is just without God in the world. But whenever we see things as they really are, we see ourselves as we ought to see and see that it is God's grace that keeps us where we're at. We have a responsibility. We can make choices. But it doesn't matter how many good choices you make, God takes his hand off of you and you, there's no hope for you. Any of us. So we who are many are one in body in Christ and individually members one of another. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace to each one, each of us is to exercise them accordingly. Each one of us have different gifts, different abilities. So often we see someone that's talented and we just think, wow, and we begin to envy their position. We begin to envy them. And whenever we begin to do that, you know what happens? We begin to miss doing what we're supposed to be doing. There's people that can do things that we can't do. There's people that are very talented. There's people that have gifts that I don't have. And they're part of us. And it's just fine that someone has something that we don't have. We're still one. You know, so, so oftentimes it's, we think that the one has the gift. He's the one that's really out there and trying to run over everybody. But oftentimes it's the one that don't have the gift that's trying to tear them down. That's the real problem. And it's the real crime. We're one, whether we're talented, or whether we're a bump on a log, we're still one. And the bump on the log is just as needed as the talent. We, if we begin to despise one another, upward or downward, we're wrong. That's the point. Like I said, oftentimes we think the one upward is the one, the one that's up there is despising the ones below, but oftentimes it's the ones below that are despising the one that's up there. And it's equally wrong. We're all the same members. So we who are many are one body in Christ and individual members of one another. Since we have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Each of us is to exercise them accordingly. Do what you're supposed to be doing. Respect those who can do something better and respect those who can't do what you can do. The same 
way. And it says, if prophecy, according to the proportion of his faith. Some people can see things. It's no great thing that they can see something. It's a gift that God has given. You deal with them accordingly. Or, and if prophecy, according to the proportion of his faith. If service, in his serving, some people are servants. And he's to have his faith in just being a servant. We don't like that sometimes. We don't want to be just the low man on the totem pole. It's not too fun sometimes. We told the story about the one, this progression of, of how he wants to always be on the next step, the next ladder, and you want, oh, the other guy's got it better. The other guy's got it better. The other guy, and just can't be content with where we're at. If your job is service, be a good servant. That's the goal. Being content. Being able to love one another. Even someone who's above you. You know, it's our nature not to be want to have someone above us. We've got a competitive heart sometimes, and we want to be right up there. But sometimes we have those that just serve. If service, in his serving. Or he who teaches, in his teaching. We have a tendency to envy those people who have a better gift than we do, or a gift, and it stands out maybe, because we want to stand out. But the point is, is just do what you're supposed to be doing. Or he who exhorts in his exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. You see, we all have a place here. You know, sometimes when we're doing one of these, we look around and say, well, nobody else is doing what I'm doing. Nobody else is doing as much as I am. And we have a tendency to want to grumble and complain, but this says, if you do it, do it without looking around about who else is doing what. You do what you're supposed to be doing. In service, in his serving. In teaching, in his teaching. Exhort, in exhortation. He who gives liberally. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. We all have, we can all do these things. But when we get to looking around and seeing that you're out doing everybody else, well, maybe I better slow down. No. You just keep doing what you're supposed to be doing. Be an example. And it says, let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil and cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Give preference to one another in honor. Not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in the spirit, serving the Lord. There we have it again. Why are we doing this? So that we can exalt ourselves and we can be special? So that we can get a big reward in heaven? No. We do these things because we're serving the Lord. What we do to the least of these, our brethren, is how we respect the Lord and what we do to the Lord. What if the Lord would have said, boy, I'm doing all the serving here. I'm doing all the cross-bearing. I, I think I'll, I don't need to be doing this anymore. I'm just going to give up and quit. Where would we be then? We need to do as to the Lord what we're doing. Not worried about what others are doing. If I'm doing something, do it with all your might. Whatsoever your hand finds to do, do it 
if everybody else does it, if everybody else pitches in and helps you, no, it says do it with all your might. So easy for us to get discouraged if you're doing something and you can't really find much help and you're doing it and you just keep on doing it and just not much help shows up and people even complaining about it. So we just want to quit. Remember the little, the little line? If you quit, you lose. If you quit, you lose. A little phrase, winners never quit. Quitters never win. God has called us to finish the race. Not to get part way and get all discouraged and beat up and get all proud of yourself because you think you're the only one doing anything and just quit. What would you do if you saw your children do that? They start losing or they start getting beat and you say, I quit. You're not playing fair. We wouldn't, wouldn't look too pretty, would it? We wouldn't allow that, would we? says be devoted to one another in brotherly love give preference to one another in honor be devoted to one another be devoted because boy every time every time he borrows something from me he brings it back just right so yeah I'll just loan it to him all day long that's devotion no devotion is, is when you loan something and it comes back broke, you just fix it and go on. Just make sure when you borrow something, I'll get him back now. No, you send it back the way you borrowed it. There's no reason for fussing about that. If, you, if you're wronged and you take it well, you've done good. But if you do evil, you've done evil. Devotion to one another is, is whenever someone fails you and you can still love them. Devotion to one another is when someone has a weakness and you can still love them. Give preference to one another in honor. Yeah, I'm going to honor them because they honor me. That's not what it says. Not lagging behind in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Not lagging behind in diligence. Diligence. Pressing on and going right through something. Starting a job and finishing it. You know, there's people that do all kinds of things. They start jobs and do great big things, but they never can quite get finished with it. Boy, it looks good when it starts. Then it winds up thrown over on the counter somewhere and just never quite finished. What good is it if it isn't finished? When we start something, diligence sees it through to the end. Is that what you want your Christian life to be? Just really do well? And then you get towards some hard times or get through some troubles. Oh, I'm just going to lay it all aside here. What do you think the Lord sees? Just some old half-done project laying aside there. Think that's what He needs? Learn diligence. Fervent in the Spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, persevering in tribulation, devoted to prayer. Rejoicing in what you got, rejoicing in hope. Keeping your eyes focused. Persevering in tribulation. Thank you for one thing that is 
backwards in this world, tribulation is what makes you strong. My grandma used to say, whatever don't kill you will make you stronger. Whatever don't kill you will make you better. Tribulation, troubles, strife, hard makes you stronger. Makes you better. We avoid it. We're scared of it. We don't like it. But that's what makes you stronger. That's what helps you persevere through tribulation. Keep on going. Devoted to prayer. This is one we, another one we forget about. Prayer. Devoted to prayer. It's the time to be alone with the Lord, to talk with the Lord, to walk with the Lord. Find our courage and find our strength. Not by Him fixing everything, but by us humbling ourselves and being resolved to carry out His will and not my own. Contributing to the needs of the saints, practicing hospitality. Contributing to the needs of the saints. You know, just taking care of each other. Just taking care of each other. Practicing hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not be haughty in mind, but associate with the lowly. Do not be wise in your own estimation. You know, whenever we're thinking that somebody isn't doing something we think they ought to be doing, often that we're pretty wise in our own estimation, aren't we? Never pay back evil for evil to anyone. Respect what is right in the sight of all men. If possible, so far as it depends on you, be at peace with all men. Never, never take your own revenge. Beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. But if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Overcoming this world, that's what Jesus taught us to do. We think, overcome evil with good that, that we just outdo them. But the, the reality is, is the, that we're not overcome by the evil. Whenever we start to repay evil for evil, evil overcomes us. It doesn't work. The way you overcome it is to leave it in God's hands. Overcome it. Rise above it. We don't need vengeance. We don't need revenge. We don't need justified. Overcome it. May the Lord add His blessings. Anyone have anything you want to share?
Jesus.